Hello guys, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm so excited to come your way today. I want to share something very brilliant and I believe it will bring you a lot of blessing. A lot of people don't really know how God expects us to worship God, understanding that man is a spirit, he lives in a body and he has a soul. Yeah, we just do what we think, what we feel, or the best we think we can do it right and not really looking at the fact that uh, there's an expectation. And towards we just do it wrong. Yeah, so I want to show you from scriptures and I want to help you align with the will of God so you don't you don't just get to do something and be getting excited that you're doing the right thing and you're really not doing what God expects you to do and that's why I brought this message and I believe this message is going to bring you a lot of blessing glory to God amen yeah look at it I'll, I'm going to start from Matthew chapter number 15 from 1 to 11 Matthew 15 from 1 to 11 it says then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were, were of Jerusalem saying why do thy disciple transgress the tradition of the elders for they wash not their hands when they eat bread but he answered and said unto them now first they said why would the disciples not be washing their hands to eat that's a very brilliant statement of course for hygiene purpose it was even important that they, they wash their hands but well they weren't saying it for hygiene purpose they were saying it for for law purpose for doctrine sake the law that guided them yeah and what what jesus said to them but he answered and said unto them why do you also transgress the commandment of god by your tradition Watch this. It says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the debt. That's according to law. But you say, Whatsoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift, but whatsoever thou, thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, and shall, shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrite. Now you see the point in point. Ye hypocrite. Well did Isaiah prophesied of you saying, These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Ye and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. This is a very strong statement. This is a very powerful statement. And I really want you to pay attention to it. Yeah. So first, he called them hypocrites. That means the action where you want to give people commandments to practice them from the external. Yeah. And internally, something is going wrong. He calls that action hypocrisy. Hallelujah. And then it says, not what enters into a man, but what comes out. So in other words, our worship to God is an inside out, not an external show. Glory to God. Our worship to God, I say that again, our worship to God is an inside heart. It's something that must proceed from the heart. Yeah. And not just something that shows up from our action. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 29, it says that no flesh may glory in my presence. I want to show you something from the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter number 16, verse number 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on his height or his stature, because I have refused him. For man looketh at on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now, this is from the Old Testament. So, this is always consistent that God will always judge from the heart. God always looks from the heart. He doesn't look from the outward. He looks from the heart. So, the heart is always where the whole thing starts from. Glory to God, somebody. Now, I'll show you another scripture. Glory to God. Amen. Matthew chapter number 22 verse number 27 Jesus said unto them Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart With all thy soul and with all thy mind Where did he start from? With all thy heart Remember in Romans chapter number 10 What did he tell you about salvation? He says with the heart man believes unto righteousness So listen here No matter the action that you take externally If your heart does not believe in Jesus That sacrifice is a waste That sacrifice is not in line with the New Testament Testament. Remember Acts chapter number 10, that man, Cornelius, who was doing so massive things. Yeah, was giving always and was always praying, right? God looked at that man and he felt pity for him. He saw that this guy really wanted to do it right. But first he has to be right. You see, so he, he had to call Peter to come lead him to Christ, right? So by him believing Jesus, glory to God, by him believing Jesus, yeah, he could now officially all the things that he was doing will now begin to make sense before God. They will not make sense until, watch this, they will not make sense until your heart has aligned right with God. And your heart will not be until you believe in Jesus. Because in Romans 10, it tells you with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Glory to God, somebody. So whatever you do, right, without your heart believing in Jesus, it is a waste. I want to show you something still in 
Matthew 15. Glory to God. Look at it. You hypocrite. Well, did, did Elias prophesy, prophesy of you saying, These people draw it now unto me with thy mouth. Their mouth is right on point. But look here. It says, And honoreth me with their lips. It says, But your heart is far away. So their heart is far from God. They don't believe God. Now let's come into the other one so we can analyze properly. So it means the first, for your sacrifice to be valid before God, your heart must first align with God. Watch this. Your heart must first align with God. And how does this happen? By believing Jesus. And then the next it says, if you now believe in Jesus, then your soul must align with the word of God. Remember, it says, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2. Look at it, even from the Old Testament in, in, in Isaiah. It says, those who keep their hearts stayed on him, he shall keep them in perfect peace. He uses the Hebrew word shalom, shalom. That means peace, peace. Glory to God, somebody. So until your heart is aligned with the will of God, your worship may not be correct. First, that you need to believe in Jesus for you to have the right, the room to offer God something. But now your soul needs to align with the word of God for you to offer God correct worship. You cannot just offer God what you think, what you like, what you feel. He has to be in line with scriptures. So your soul must align with scriptures for it to be right. And then the last it says your soul and then it says and with all your mind. And then in another translation it says with all your might. Glory to God. Romans chapter number 12 verse number 1. It says present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service of worship. Present your body a living sacrifice. So in other words, your body must be a sacrifice for the usage of the Holy Ghost. It says the word holy, there's the word set apart. That means you've been, you've been taken away from the system of the running of this word and then you are now aligned with the word to present what is good to God. So let me bring it closely so you can understand. First, we must believe in God. Anyone who does not believe in Jesus is not rendering a service that is valid to God. It's very painful, but that, that's an unfortunate situation. If you don't believe in Jesus, you cannot be worshipping God rightly. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to, to my Father except by me. So if he is the way, how do we get on the way right properly to be right with God is that we must believe in Jesus. Glory to God, somebody. And then, having believed in Jesus, we also need to know what the Word says. Because if our worship is not in sync with the Word, if it doesn't align with the Word, then it's a waste of time. Remember, in, in Colossians chapter number 3, he tells us that, that the word of God should be full in us. The word of God should be full in us, that, that we now render a service to God. He says, uh, even as song, even in singing songs, so even the songs that we write must align with scriptures. Otherwise, we'll be doing something to him that does not make sense. We cannot take an material and offer to God. We must take his material and offer to God. Remember it says, now is the time that the true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. It says, for the Father seeketh such. So worship is a spirit to spirit relationship. That means we take from God and give to God. Hallelujah. So if our heart is rightly aligned, if our heart is rightly aligned, then the Holy Ghost will be able to minister the will of God through us and then sacrificially we will be able to offer it to God. Glory to God somebody. This is very very important. So it's not about just doing things in your flesh, doing things that seems right, doing things that makes a lot of sense. It's about doing things that are in line with the will of God for you. Otherwise, it would have been a wasted effort. Glory to God, somebody. So you must make sure that your worship makes sense before the Creator. You must make sure that your worship aligns with the will of God. You must make sure that you understand this pattern and order Otherwise, you'll be doing things that, and you'll be excited thinking, well, I'm offering to God, but it's not making sense in the will of God because he had not followed in the pattern. He says your heart first, then your, your soul, your mind, and then your strength. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. This is my message. Let's get it right. Let's do it right. Okay. I, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are not even in a valid space to offer God something. And if you do believe in Jesus, does your heart, does your mind align with the word of God? Do you understand scriptures? Have you metamorphosed? Have you transformed by the renewing of your mind to be what scripture says and state? And then is 
body always working in the wheel of the spirit. That means, are you aligned the, sp the spirit, right? Are you aligned the word of God control your body? Remember, your body is a slave. It goes where you send it. So if the soul is wrong, your body will not be right. Do you now use your energy to, to work and labor, your intellect, your emotions, your, your intellect, your emotions, and everything that concerns you, do they align with the will of God? Your emotions must not control you. You must control your emotions in the will of God. Your intelligence must not work against God. Your intelligence must work in the will of God. Glory to God. Romans chapter number 8, it says, Sense uh, without, without the Holy Ghost, right, is dead. Sense without the Holy Ghost is dead. So he doesn't have to be sensed without the Holy Ghost. He has to be sensed with the Holy Holy Ghost. Glory to God, somebody. So let your service become valid, reasonable, and then increasing in quantum. So God can begin to see how much you truly love him, how much you truly value him, and how much you have placed him above every other thing in this earth. Thank you for listening to me. I believe this brings you a lot of blessing, and I want you to use it for God bless you. I love you. I'll see you again next time. Amen.